Alright, what's up my painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today we're gonna do a acrylic painting of a nice little stream running through the woods, likely in the Appalachian forest somewhere. We have cadmium yellow pale, light apricot, Mars orange, deep yellow, sap green, mauve purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, raw umber, Mars black, and we need some white of course. And you can see that I already painted my canvas with this green color. There is going to be a lot of green in the painting, uh, so if you have a canvas and you want to make it very easy to follow along, I recommend painting your canvas just like a sap green color, maybe sap green with a little bit of ultramarine blue and white, uh, just to get a base color to start adding more paint on. That'll make things a lot easier. If you start with a blank canvas, you're just going to need to add a little bit more paint as you're working than I will need to do. I'm going to start by sketching out the scene with this flat tipped brush. So I'm just going to get my paintbrush in the water there, take a little bit of phthalo blue, just thin that down, and I'm going to start by just sketching out where the creek meets the tree line in the far background. And then, yeah, let's make it come this way. And then I'm going to paint a line for the edge. Basically the uh, contact between the stream and the trees. So that's, in general, that's our stream. We've got a bunch of rocks in the stream, we've got a bunch of trees in the background too, so I'm just going to start by adding some of our trees that I can see here. I'm just going to add those limbs for now so I know where they are. And then in the foreground we've got quite a few, so there's one comes right through right there. Then we've got a couple here. Just trying to show where these trunks are right now. Next I'm just gonna start to sketch out some of our mountain laurels or bushes by the water. I'm not sure exactly if they're mountain laurels or not, but they look like them. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of outline where I see each new bush starting as it's moving closer. And they're starting to get larger as they're coming closer to us. Then we got all kinds of tree branches and uh, leaves up here. That's going to be less detailed though. Another one right here, laurel. Alright, now that we've got our bushes figured out, we're going to start to add some rocks. And the rocks that are farther away are going to be much smaller. 
closer together. And then the rocks closer to the viewer are going to be larger and they'll have a little bit more water in between them. They're going to have a little bit more spacing. Now you don't have to completely copy this exactly like I'm painting my rocks. You can add less rocks or more rocks depending on how much water you want to have visible. Just make sure when you're painting your rocks in that you're following the general rules for landscapes that you know the rocks are getting smaller as they're farther away. I just have my paint watered down with some water. Again, we're using acrylic paints here. I just sketch everything out first, and once I get my sketch with the paint, then I'll go back and start to add some of our nice details. Got a little waterfall just right here. As the water's just falling right over some rocks. Alrighty, and just like that we've got our scene sketched out. Next we can start to add some of the nice colorful details. So I'm going to take my angled brush. I'm going to start with some of the colors in the far distance. So I took some mauve purple, ultramarine blue, and white. I'm just going to start to add, whoop, let's make that a little bit more on the blue spectrum there. Take a hint of thalo too. A little more thalo. There we go. Hey, that's better. I'll just start adding a little bit of that. Because I already painted this canvas, I don't have to really thickly apply this paint on. I can just kind of brush it in here. Add a little more white. These things are really light right down here. Just brushing that in. Okay, and I'm going to take a little bit of my orange and my apricot, a little bit of yellow, and we'll just start to add some of that color in here. And you want to almost make it look like you're painting little leaves on a tree limb. So hold the angle brush, just giving it some little dabs and a cluster, building up that leafy look. Now we can take some sap green. A little bit of black. Let's take a little ultramarine blue too. A little thalo. Start to add a couple little shadows back in here. Again, just using that angle brush to get that same leaf-like look.
I'm gonna take a little bit more of my phthalo blue and white. Just add that a bit up here. Maybe take a little bit of that apricot color too. Just pull that up. Now we'll take some yellow, white, and our deep yellow. We can start to add some highlights. So as we're getting closer to the top, the trees are getting a little closer to us. So the um, brush strokes can get a little larger. And I'm basically painting over all of those little tree limbs that I made before, but I'm keeping in mind where they are. Add a couple little highlights in here. Now we can take some sap green, blend that in, maybe a hint of thalo. That'll give us some nice greens. Let's take a little more green and thalo and yellow. There we go. Just put that right over top some of your highlights that you put in there, that yellow. And if you ever want to start to blend a little bit better, then you could just get the extra paint off of your brush. Just start working that in there. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of black with some white and some ultramarine blue. Still using that angle brush here. Let's take a little more blue. And I'm just going to start to add a couple little limbs I'm very, very lightly holding this brush. I'm just letting it drag along and creating, letting it create these lines. So that was just um, phthalo blue, mauve, purple, and black. It's going to be for this trunk here. And they kind of just disappear off into the trees. Can add some white to lighten them up. Some of them are a little bit lighter. We've got some like this. A little limb sticking out. Some have a little more black in them. But you definitely need to include these tree trunks and tree limbs in your background here. That's very important. If you need to water down your paint to get a better steady line, you can do that. And then we'll take the excess paint off the brush and let's start to warm, brighten things up again a little. So I'm just going to take some white, yellow, some of my deep yellow. I'm going to add that as a nice little limb right here. And we'll brighten this up a bit too. So we're just playing with layering, adding some branches and then covering them up with some leaves, adding some more branches, covering those up with some leaves. And by doing all of these layering, you're really creating that depth that you would see in the forest. Then we can take some sap green and some phthalo, a little bit of white. It's a nice shadow color. Create some shadows.
Let's take some more thalo. We can start to put in this plant bush. So it starts out darker as you get towards the inside of the plant and then it's nice and light on the outside where the light is. So I'm just making these little lines that are kind of starting about midway through the bush there, coming out to the edge. Alright, we're going to do that again on this side. Start with that light layer since it's a little lighter on this side. Then I'll add my darker. Just mix some phthalo with some brown and some green. And I'll just put this right there. You can even add a couple more little highlights on top of that. All right. Looking nice. Next, let's get a little of this color here and build up the depth right in this section. And we can take some of our orange and our apricot, add some of those colors back in. It's a nice little autumn scene. Alright, that's looking nice. Let me get a little more phthalo blue and white. Add some highlights in here. I'll just take some sap green. A little bit of yellow some of that medium yellow. Taking my blues, starting to build up some shadows again over there. Gonna add some shadows on this side now. A little orange, put that in there. A little bit there too. This section, take a little bit of green and our phthalo. And our next, let's add a little more phthalo. A little bit of brown. So we're moving up with our mountain laurel plants. Gonna get a little highlight color there. Just blended in some green and some white, a little bit of deep yellow. And we'll just start to add some little lines there. All right, we can move on to this side. A little more green on this side. It's actually, it's a pretty strong green on this side. Whoop. A little bit of white blended in. All right, now we're gonna make a shadow for under these spots. So I'm mixing black with blue, a little bit of umber, that was my phthalo blue. And I'm just going to add that under here, kind of just start to build up a base for under these bushes where it's gonna be pretty dark. And while we're at it, let's just take a little bit of black, blend that in, and we'll start to fill in the colors for our rocks or just the shape, fill in the base shape, and then we'll start to add color and detail later. So just fill in all of your rocks with that dark color. If it's just straight black, that's fine too.
And let's continue building on this. So let's take a little bit of our phthalo blue, a little brown, and some green. And just start to add little patches under. Let's take some more blue. And more green. And we're going to build up on that a little bit more, but for now I can see that I have my two values. And we'll just carry this dark one over here a little more. Alrighty, and same thing on this side. Let's take a little green, blue, and add that right here. green. Got to build up some shadows on this one. Then we can build up some highlights. Take some green, some phthalo, hint of yellow. Start to add those highlights here. Mostly at the top. It's nice and bright at the top. And then things get a little bit darker and cooler as we move down. And I'll just take some pure green here and add that for this layer. Mix some white into there. We'll add some super highlights. Add some more highlights onto this one with the angle brush. Lightly touching on here, just holding it at different angles to get different angled little leaves. Making sure I'm still leaving some space for shadows. And then this one up here is in shadow, so I'm just mixing my blue and green together for that spot. And we'll come back with some highlights later. Now we can start to add these trees, so I'm going to take some black, a little bit of my raw umber, add some purple. Take a little bit of white there too for the trees that are a little farther back. And I'm just going to start to paint those in. Make sure they have limbs too. As they're getting closer to us, they're getting darker. Take a little more of my yellows, the cadmium yellow light and the deep yellow, a little bit of apricot mixed in there. And I'm going to add some highlights that I'm starting to see from these trees. Mix 
mix a little bit of orange in there. And we'll take a little more yellow. Add some more highlights up in here. Just keep building the greens up. And take just some yellow, white. Just add a couple highlights on this limb here. A little bit here too. And we'll add one up here too. Just to calm this one down, I'm going to add a little green in there. So I'm going to redo that limb because that's a little farther in front of everything else. There we go. All right, so we got a little bit of orange visible on this tree here. Build, let's build up a little bit of the shadows on this left side. So I'm mixing my green, my thala blue, and my brown. And I'm just building up the contrast with the shadows over here. Then we can take our white, with a little bit of green, more green. Start to build those up again. And again, this is my ankle brush. I'm just I keep moving it in different angles so that I can get that appearance of leaves. Still leaving some space for shadows. Okay, then we'll just I'm gonna tweak this side a little too while I'm working. All right, next let's add our dark limb in the foreground here. So I'm mixing thalo, black, ultramarine, and the raw umber. And I'm just gonna make that go straight up like it is in my reference photograph. Or straight at an angle, I should say. <laughs> And it doesn't need to be perfect. It's gonna have some bends and kicks in it. I'm gonna make sure we paint it as we would see it in nature. Then we're gonna add some apricot and some orange. A little more orange. I wanna warm this up. On this side, there's some light on the trunk. And same on this side here, a little bit. A little bit of green on there as well. Just working right on that wet paint there to give it a little bit extra color and like there's moss or something growing on the tree. I say let's add some water here just so we aren't looking at a canvas full of green. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush here, my flat tipped brush. And we're gonna take our white and we're gonna mix that with some of our ultramarine blue. Make sure you don't get any other colors mixed in with that or it's gonna turn to a color that you probably don't want. And I'm just gonna start by, actually, you know what, let's put a little bit of black in there too and a little bit more ultramarine. And we're just going to start by filling in that this little space in between the rocks, going off into the distance. And if you accidentally cover up a rock, you can always just re-add that rock later. It's not a big deal. Make sure you have a nice path for your water to Make it through. 
Getting closer and closer to the foreground. I think I'm, I'm gonna need to add some rocks back here because it's looking a little bit spare. Barren? Looking a little bit barren. Spare. <laughs> Just using this nice base color to figure out where everything is going. Then we can add more detail and color to the water later. It's starting to really come to life, isn't it? Just adding that water. Just the base color for our water. done a similar painting tutorial like this before but that painting was way more detailed I do not believe it was in real time and that was using oil paint so that was a painting I made uh, that was inspired by one of my own photos from the Smoky Mountains National Park and I'll put a link to that below this video so you guys can see it if you'd like if you're a more advanced painter and you'd like to re recreate that painting, then you could do that. This one is a little bit more for practicing hobby artists. All right, there's white, a little more blue. And we're gonna mix a little bit of phthalo blue in here too, now that we're at the foreground and this area is mostly in shadow. This is where our waterfall is. and a little more phthalo blue in there. A nice smooth texture here so I don't want to be using the brush like this where I'm you know kind of scratching the canvas I want to have a nice smooth application of paint so I'm not pressing too hard I'm trying to fill in this space but in general keeping a back and forth motion
I'm just gonna take a little more of my Thalo Ultramarine. Let's do some more Ultramarine. A little bit of purple. And I'm just gonna throw a shadow right here so I remember there's a waterfall right there. Add some more Thalo because it's darker. And a waterfall right there. And I decided I'm gonna add a little waterfall coming down right there too. And we've got a little shadow on this side of our rocks. Going back to our angle brush here, we're gonna take some black, a little bit of the sap green, some white, yeah, let's take some of that yellow too and some of our raw umber. We're gonna add some trees right here. Just kind of sticking up, coming out a little bit at different angles. These ones are a little lighter. Things are getting a little more light on this side of the creek for some reason. that down by adding some of our Thalo blue and our mauve purple. Just start to add a couple more here. Big one there. Black for the base. I'm gonna add a little bit of that black on this one too, just to darken that up. Darken that down. <laughs> and why not? Let's add one more. Right there. Okay, cool. So we got our trees in there. We can get the excess paint off our brush. And I'm gonna take some more white and green, Prussian blue, take some deep yellow. Some more white. Add some of our highlights from the laurels. Up close. And we'll have to go over a couple of these trees again too, but that's okay. Take some green and white. And I want to add a nice highlighted section right here. You can boost this highlight a little bit right there too. And then let's take some of our blues and boost the we add the shadows under these leaves in the foreground. Looks good. Now I'm going to take some white, mix it with that yellow color and a little blues getting in there. Let's take some more white. And let's go back with the highlights again. Just continuing to build up that contrast. And when you're adding these leaves, make sure you're not spacing them evenly apart. You want to let some overlap a bit, leave some gaps, because in nature that's how you'd see it. Shadow back up there. Alright, let's 
looking better. Nice. Alright, now let's start to lighten those rocks up in the background. So I'm just going to take some of that watercolor and we're going to add that on the tops of some of these rocks. We'll mix in a little bit of black for the base. Just by lightening these rocks up, we're also pushing them back into the distance. You can take a little bit of our orange, mix with apricot. Got some leaves on top of these rocks. Okay, now we're going to go back to Let's take a little ultramarine blue. Start to add that for some of the rocks back here. We don't want to have any rocks that are that true black color. <gasps> uh, so we don't want to have any rocks. We don't want to have any rocks that are true black this far in the distance. We want things to still have little bit of a lighter value and then as we get closer to the foreground that's when we'll start to have true black for the shadows for example like this rock here got our nice little highlight Let's take some of our raw umber, start to add that in a little bit to the rocks. Just in some random little spots just to give hints of that color. Take some of our purples, you can add the purples right under your highlights for the section of rock that's not like a super bright highlight but it's not fully in shadow maybe it's a wet part of the rock I don't have a lot of br of paint on my brush. It's a kind of just working the colors into the rocks without really throwing a lot of paint down. This rock's got some water just kind of rushing over it. A 
the little highlights over here too. Yeah, let's throw a little more orange on some of these rocks where we have some leaves. Make those leaves a little more detailed in the foreground. I'll just add a little bit of brown in here towards the base of these mountain laurels just to show there are some dead leaves down here. Now we can work some more on the water. So we have some highlights that are going to be pretty close to pure white. And those are just going to be in like little lines. You don't want to have too much paint on your brush. Just enough so that you can paint these lines. can let the lines kind of blend in a little with the other watercolor that you had there. And then as we get far off into the distance again, we don't want to have that super extreme white. We want it to cool down a little. You have a nice little rim of that white right above your little waterfall area. Going back and forth, letting that paint just get right on there. And I do want it to leave a line. I don't want it to blend in perfectly. I do want to be able to tell that there's a difference between this and my base color. That's looking nice. Take a little bit more of our phthalo blue and white. I'm going to touch up some of these blue spots that I had. It's just reflecting the light because it's wet. These rocks are wet, so by adding this light blue reflection, it's, and a little bit of purple too, it's uh, just reflecting the colors in the sky and it's letting us know that these rocks are wet.
I'm going to build up the shadows again. Just mixing my ultramarine blue with black. Some of these rocks have like a really clear contact between highlight and shadow. Some of them don't. Then I'm going to take some of my blues, both of them, and start to add and a little purple too. And we'll add that just on the other side of our rocks in the foreground just to show there's a little shadow being cast by these rocks. We've got a shadow right at the top of these little waterfalls where some rocks are stopping the water. And then as the water's moving closer to the sides, it's going to get a little more ultramarine blue in it. Things are a little bit more in shadow over here. We'll take a little more purple with our brown. Just add that. A couple little spots. Where the water's running over some rocks. And we'll mix some more of our blues. Purple. White. I'll start to add a couple little shadows in here too. Just making back and forth motions. It's creating this look of some shadows or little ripples. working on tying everything together. Start to work on that waterfall a bit more, putting some lines up.
finishing up these rocks and the detail on the rocks. Trying to get them to look a little bit more realistic. Give them a little bit of shape so that they don't look like flat shapes. It makes them look more round if you add a shadow to one side or a little highlight. Then I'm just going to throw a couple little leaves. Right in the foreground here, we've got a little tree just creating some leaves. And take some black to get those branches in there. Then we're going to take some white, blend that in, add a little more ultramarine blue. A little more white and just start to add some highlights on those leaves. to our rocks here. And we can add some little tree limb, tree leaves up here. Some right here too. Just using that sap green. All right, guys, that is it. Let's call that a finished painting. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. And if you recreate this piece, you can post it on your Instagram and tag me at the underscore painting underscore stoof. I'd love to see your version of this painting. I also recently started a Patreon account, so if you would like to support me on Patreon. I have a link for that in my description right below this video. So hope to see you guys there. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye!